Welcome to our lecture online. Now to give us some more practice, let's do some addition and some division here. On the numerator, we have something that's expressed in terms of magnitude and the phase angle, and then we have the complex number representation here. In the denominator, we're multiplying two complex numbers together, and then we divide the denominator into the numerator. How do we do that? Well, we'll show you. First, what we want to do is convert this into the real and imaginary part. So this becomes equal to 20 times the cosine of a minus 30 degrees plus j times the sine of a minus 30 degrees. And that's then going to be added to a 4 minus j3. In the denominator, let's go ahead and multiply these two complex numbers together. We first multiply the real numbers together, 4 times 5. That gives us 20. And then we have 4 times a minus j2, that would be minus 8j, or mi yeah, minus j8, I guess we write the j first, minus j times 8, and then multiply these two together, that would be plus j times 45, and then multiply these two together, we get minus j squared times 18, minus j squared times 18. Now j squared is going to be negative 1, that turns this into a positive 18. Simplifying this a little bit more, so in the numerator we get, uh, let's see, the cosine of minus 30 is the same as the cosine of 30. So we take the cosine of 30, multiply times 20, that gives us a real part of 17.3. 17.3, and here, if we multiply this times the sine of the negative 30, that's the same as the negative sine of 30, the 0.5, that would be minus 0.5 times 20, or minus j times 10, and that's going to be added to 4 minus j times 3. And in the denominator, we add a positive 18 to 20, that gives us 38 minus j times 37. Now we add the numerator together, now we just simply add the, the uh, real and the imaginary parts together. So this becomes 21.3 for the real part, and minus 13j, or j13, I guess we write the j first, j13 for the imaginary part divided by 38 minus j37. Okay, now how do we divide one complex number by another complex number? The best thing to do is convert this back to the magnitude and the phase angle. So this can now be written as the magnitude would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. So we have 21.3. I uh, might as well just write it out so you can see how that's done. So that would be equal to the square root of 21.3. Whoa, got ahead of myself. 3 quantity squared plus 13 quantity squared for the magnitude. And now for the angle, we take the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is the minus 13, divided by the real part, which is 21.3. So that's how we find the magnitude and the phase angle. We do the same for the denominator. So here for the magnitude, that's the square root of 38 squared plus 37 squared. And the phase angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is minus 37, divided by the real part, which is 38. So you can see that you first want to convert these to the magnitude and the phase angles. So this becomes equal to 21.3 squared plus 13 squared equals, take the square root, that becomes 24.95. So that's 24.95 with a phase angle of 13, make that negative, divided by 21.3, take the inverse tangent, that would be minus 31.4 degrees. We divide that by the magnitude, 38 squared plus 37, whoop, 37 squared equals, take the square root, gives us 53.04, and the phase angle is going to be 37 negative divided by 38, take the inverse tangent of a minus 44.2 degrees. Okay, so now what you do is you divide the 53 into the 24, so we get 
0.95 divided by 53.04, that's equal to 0 0.47, with a phase angle of, you're going to subtract the one on the bottom, so you get minus 31.4 minus a minus 44.2 degrees, and so this eventually becomes 0 0.47, with a phase angle of, that would be 44.2 minus 31.4, that would be 12.8 degrees. And that would then be the result of that kind of crazy combination. But you can see how you just simply go from one step to the next. You first convert from magnitude and angle to the real and imaginary parts. Then you can combine the real and imaginary parts in the numerator. In the denominator, you simply multiply this out. Once you get a real imaginary part, you then divide the denominator into the denominator by first converting to the magnitude and phase angle, and then it becomes a lot easier to divide the two complex numbers together. And that's how it's done.